There were many epidemics. If you read any classical book of history, Tariq al-Tabari, or uh, much later Ibn Kathir wrote his book, or you have Yaqut al-Hamawi, Mu'jam uh, al-Buldan, you have many uh, different you know, uh, treatises and, and um, uh, history books written. And you cannot read a book of history except that you'll come across a number of plagues. For example, in the year 218 Hijrah, a plague affected Egypt and not a single household was unaffected. In fact, it is said that all the governors and leaders and statesmen died in 218 Hijrah uh, in Egypt. In 228, uh, that plague reached Azerbaijan and they said that so many people died that they ran out of cloth to cover the uh, bodies and uh, they could not bury the dead. In Basra as well in the year 406, uh, the plagues became so uh, uh, deadly that the, the, the graveyards were full and the bodies were basically in the streets for a few weeks. Uh, it is said that uh, in some cases the entire family uh, passed away and they would simply just you know close the house and that would be their burial for uh, many months until the plagues uh, finished. In the year 448 Hijrah, uh, another plague swept through uh, some lands, including Egypt and Andalus. And because of this, Imam al-Dhahabi uh, mentions in his Seer Adam al nubala you can look this up, volume 18, page 311, for those who are interested, because this is a very interesting quote here. Imam al-Dhahabi says that, وَقَعَ فِي مَصْرِ وَالْأَنْدَلُسِ قَحْطٌ وَوَبَاءٌ كَبِيرٌ There was a plague and a famine in Andalus and uh, Masr uh, that people never had seen before. حَتَّى بَقِيَةِ الْمَسَاجِدُ مُغْلَقَةً بِلَا مُصَلِّنْ Until the masajid remained shut without anybody praying in them. So this is very explicit here. In the year 448 Hijrah, the plague was so severe and the famine was so severe that the masajid were shut and not a single musalli remained in certain areas and uh, lands. And this is explicitly mentioned uh, in Seer uh, Alam uh, and other books as well. And there are many other incidents as well, but I want to jump to now, uh, of course, the infamous Black uh, Plague or the Black Death that swept through the 8th century of the Hijrah, corresponding to the 14th century uh, of uh, the Gregorian calendar. And it swept through the Mediterranean and Andalusia, and it affected the entire globe. Of course, the epicenter was Europe, but it affected the entire globe. As I said, this plague, the bubonic plague or the black plague, it was the greatest plague that recorded history has ever seen. And once again, in a number of regions, the plague was so severe. Let me quote you from the famous historian Al-Maqrizi, who writes in his book, uh, As-Suluk, volume four, page 88. And I give these references because again, uh, sometimes people doubt like, oh my God, how can this be true? Look at this up yourself. Uh, Al-Maqrizi writes in his Kitab As-Suluk uh, the, on the black plague that occurred in the year 749 Hijrah. In a number of regions, the adhan was stopped being given. People stopped giving adhan in entire regions. And in the famous place that he's going to mention now, or he said mentions it, only one adhan was given in the entire city. And the majority of masajid and the majority of monasteries where Sufis would gather together, they were closed down. They did not remain open. So Al Maqrizi is saying the plague was so severe that the majority of masajid and in some places all of the masajids in some regions they were shut down so this is something that is not new now uh, the, 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 the issue of us being proactive uh, is something that is new, it is true, because those people were being reactive. Uh, in those times, when it's too late, then they're reacting. We are trying to be proactive and shutting the masjids down before it gets to the level where there are no more musallin and we have to shut the masjid down. But the point is that it has happened in Islamic history that regions have had to shut masajid and stop the adhan because of the plagues that were um, happening. No doubt, and I'll be the first to say, I don't think it has ever happened to the global scale that we are witnessing now, but it is because we have more knowledge and we understand the reality of plagues and we're being proactive because of that. Now, back to my uh, series of, of, of anecdotes here. 
the famous scholar Ibn Hajar, uh, of course, the greatest uh, commentator of Sahih al-Bukhari. Uh, in the year 833 Hijrah, he lost three of his daughters to a plague that affected all of Egypt during the reign of Sultan Ashraf of the Mamluk uh, era. And because of this, he wrote the encyclopedic work, Badl al-Ma'oon fi Fadl al-Ta'oon. The Badl al-Ma'oon fi Fadl al-Ta'oon, it is an encyclopedia, over 400 pages. It is printed, you can buy it uh, in the classical bookstores, uh, in books and bookstores that sell classical works, excuse me. You can buy it in, in the, the, the bookstores that have these types of books. Uh, and it is a very big treatise, 400 pages. It's an encyclopedic work that covers many aspects, the theology of of plagues, where plagues come from, what to do in times of plagues, the ahadith about plagues, the fiqh of plagues. And this is a very interesting book that maybe, again, Allah knows what my future lectures are going to be, but maybe we'll summarize this book in another lecture. I don't know, we'll see. In any case, um, some of the takeaways from this book, Badl al Ma'oon fi Fadl al Ta'oon of Ibn Hajar, uh, and he wrote this book, subhanAllah, what an alim, what a genius. His family has died. He's seen three of his daughter dies. How does he react? He takes that grief and he channels it to write one of the best books the world has ever seen about the fiqh of plagues. Look at this, the, the mindset, subhanAllah, of these great ulama. In any case, so of the things that we can um, uh, uh, derive from this book, uh, uh, that he mentions, he has chapters, uh, that plagues are a mercy for the believers. Plagues are a mercy for the believers and a punishment unto others. And uh, he mentions the famous hadith, which is in Sahih Bukhari, that the Prophet ﷺ was asked about uh, ta'un, and ta'un is the Arabic word for plague. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the ta'un, it is an adab upon whomever Allah wants, and it is a rahmah that Allah has made for the believers. So this is our theological understanding of plagues. It is an adab. Notice, by the way, he did not say an adab on all kuffar. He did not say this, our Prophet ﷺ. He said, it is an adab on whomever Allah wants it to be. And it is a rahmah for the believers. So this underscores our mentality. Dear Muslims, all that is happening around us now, we need to understand this as being a rahmah for the mu'min and we ask Allah that we are amongst the mu'mini we want it to be a rahmah even as we suffer some of the pains and the pinches and the consequences in our heart of hearts our attitude is whatever is happening there's a greater wisdom and in the end it will be a rahmah for me also Ibn Hajar mentions that he has chapters here about those who die in the plague. And of course, these chapters are very emotional, very powerful, because of course, he's lost three of his own family members. And of course, he has in this the famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that anyone who remains in a land of plagues, and he stays there sabiran muhtasiban, patient, expecting the reward of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, knowing that nothing will happen except whatever Allah has willed it to happen, then if he dies, he shall die the death of a shaheed. And Ibn Hajar mentions therefore the famous, you know, we all know this, inshallah, I hope we all know this now, that whoever dies because of the plague with Iman and Taqwa, that death will be considered the death of a shaheed. And this is a great blessing from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, and it is also a comfort and a consolation that Ibn Hajar felt much consoled that my daughters, my family members have died the death of a shaheed. And he also mentions many chapters about the issue of running away from plagues, fle fleeing from, from plagues. And of course, the famous hadith, uh, which is the hadith of uh, Abu, uh, Abu Ubaid and Umar uh, and Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, that if you hear of a plague in another land, don't go there. And if you're in that land, don't run away from it. And then he mentions that when is this hadith applicable and when is it not uh, applicable? And uh, he actually ends up concluding, and this is the opinion, by the way, of the vast majority of ulama, that it is allowed to travel to and from such lands if there are pressing reasons to do so. What you're not allowed to do when the plague has come to your land, you run away in cowardice and fear, thinking that running away will save you. That is haram. But Ibn Hajar mentions, and after him a Suyuti, and before him others call this as well. If you're in a land and you have a genuine reason to go somewhere, for example, to protect your family, for example, for medical treatment somewhere else, and so you leave one land to another land for legitimate reason, Ibn Hajar says, 
this hadith does not apply to you. Now, should you leave? Should you not leave? This also goes back to the experts of our times and we listen to the medical experts. But the point is that if we are in an epicenter where uh, our experts have said this is an epicenter of disease and we are told we should not travel, to flee thinking that running away from it is going to protect us, that is obviously going against uh, what our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم اللهم إن من الجنون والجذام والبرص وسيء الأسقام اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص وسيء الأسقام اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص وسيء الأسقام اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص وسيء الأسقام اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص وسيء الأسقام اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص وسيء الأسقام اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص وسيء الأسقام والبرص وسيء الأسقام فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين